November 15th, 2012. A new Kickstarter campaign begins with a $100,000 goal. Kaiju Combat, Giant Monsters, Awesome Fighting, Online. Over the past nine months, Kaiju Combat has grown from just a couple of dozen people spitballing ideas in the Toho Kingdom forums to a community of more than 400 members of kaijucombat.com. Together, we're going to make the best monster fighting game of all time, because this time, literally every decision is being vetted by the fans who want to play the game. Kaiju Combat was intended to be the ultimate series of giant monster fighting games. The games were to include one to four player battles, online matchmaking, frequent releases of new paid content, and complex battle mechanics such as dynamic grappling, unique forms of movement, air combos, reversals, parries, destructible environments, and more. We're not just going to make one game. We're going to make a dozen games or more over time. Every game is a standalone release that you can play on and enjoy all by itself. But if you buy multiple products, you can combine all that content and play with all of it online. The two main selling points of the planned series were the inclusion of fan-submitted playable kaiju and the inclusion of iconic kaiju from popular culture such as Godzilla, Gamera, and Ultraman. Within just a couple of days, the project quickly raised $20,000 and would over the course of the next few weeks hit the $40,000 mark. In order to put the success of Kaiju Combat into context, keep in mind that this campaign actually began shortly after the successfully funded video game Kickstarter's Pillars of Eternity. At the time, Kickstarter was a very popular method of getting independent games funded. Unlike nowadays in 2019, where consumers have become too jaded to put much stock into crowdfunding projects like these due to the fact that most of them end up being scams, such as the notorious Mighty Number no. 9. Also, in 2012 there was a distinct shortage of giant monster related content. The latest well-known fighting game at the time was Godzilla Unleashed in 2007, which was made by Pipeworks Software, and the latest well-known giant monster movie was Cloverfield in 2008. But four years later, in late 2012, kaiju fans were eager for any new content they could find in the genre. On top of all this, the project seemed to have a promising team of developers, some of which had previously worked on Pipeworks Godzilla games from years earlier, such as the previously mentioned Godzilla Unleashed. The most noteworthy of these developers was Simon Strange, lead character designer for the Pipework games and founder of Sunstone Games. Now as we can see by this chart, the video game industry is basically super f <coughs> Enter Pipeworks Software again, or at least their former employees because they're prepping a new giant monster fighting game called Kaiju Combat. But, of course, the video game industry being what it is, they're going to need some help. So that's why they have a Kickstarter for their brand new game. As you can see, there's a lot of cool concept art for some of the monsters they're working on. They've hired comic book artists that have worked on Godzilla comics in the past. They have some pretty active forms of everyone exchanging ideas. There's also a ton of monsters already designed. The project would go on to reach its goal of $100,000 with less than a week before its deadline arrived. Then two $10,000 backers simultaneously backed out of the project, but it was okay because they managed to make up lost ground in just a few days. Finally, on December 21st, 2012, the Kickstarter came to a close. $112,513 dollars had been raised with 1,247 backers. It was time to get to work. As the months rolled by, Sunstone started production on trading card sets, and the design team members decided on the roster for the two games planned for release. The first Kaiju Combat title was to be Kaiju Land Battles, which would feature four playable kaiju from the now defunct Facebook game Kaiju Land. The second title was to be The Fall of Nemesis Clash of the Kaiju Jin, which would feature a robust single player story and several playable kaiju created by Kickstarter backers. Kaiju Land Battles would be free to play, and The Fall of Nemesis would be a fully retail game around the $30 range. But it seems that as time continued on, progress made towards the actual games ended up being much slower than anticipated. This in and of itself might not have been a big deal, after all, video games get delayed all the time. The unfortunate issue was that it was hard for casual observers to track the progress of the game. Unless you were in on the various decisions being made backstage, that is, if you spent $5 to receive the design team member badge during the Kickstarter campaign, it wasn't exactly clear what state the project was in at any given time. This was evidently enough of an 
issue to prompt an r slash Godzilla user on May 24th, 2014 to ask the question, what happened to Colossal Kaiju Combat? Now anyone who has spent time on the Kaiju Combat community forums before they went offline probably knows who Bamboo Shoots is. For a while, he was actually more well-known and active on the forums than Simon Strange himself. Well, in his reply to this Reddit user, whose profile has since been deleted, he wrote this. I've invested lots of time, energy, and money into Colossal Kaiju Combat and can safely say the game will not be what was promised, nor will it be received well by most people. I'm not even sure where to begin with this whole mess. What led Bamboo to think the way he did is unknown. As a design team member and frequent forum user, Bamboo probably knew better than most that something was not going as planned from the developer's side of things. Regardless, his prediction was proved correct on August 11th, 2014, when an early access version of Kaiju Land Battles finally got greenlit on Steam. Kaiju Land Battles was bare bones to say the least. Some weren't impressed with the lack of features and others were understandably let down by the fact that the game was supposed to be free to play but instead came with a $5 price tag. Though many defended the product, saying that the core gameplay was good and that it was fun to play despite its flaws. However good or bad the available product really was, Bamboo's prediction from months earlier was correct. It wasn't what was promised and most people did not receive it well. From then forward, things continued as normal for the community, though general enthusiasm for the project had undoubtedly dwindled. New updates to the game came out fairly steadily, the trading card game wasn't really losing any traction, and the community forums were seemingly just as active as ever. Original monster submissions kept coming in, and suggestions to help improve the quality of Kaiju Land Battles were tossed around quite a bit. The Fall of Nemesis had been delayed to a November 2015 release, but this didn't seem to phase most of the forum's active users. But then, in late 2014, tragedy struck. The development team's environment artist sadly passed away. This not only delayed work on the environmental designs, but also the planned building destruction system and dynamic grappling system since these features were directly linked to the environment. For various reasons, a replacement designer was never found. Perhaps the shoe required a very specific size foot to fill it. 2015 came and went, and the fall of Nemesis was nowhere to be seen. Minor updates and improvements to Kaiju Land Battles were gradually released, though on September 24th of 2015, the final patch notes for the game were released. Finally, on May 5th, 2016, the fall of Nemesis Clash of the Kaijujin's development was suspended. During this time, forum users seemed to be increasing in volatility. What have we learned from videos like this? Never back games that show no real game footage. And this game only showed one tiny bit of animation. Hell, nice artwork though, am I right? He's gone through more personnel on this project than he's willing to admit. He's blank and he's saying that there's no lightning bolt. This thing was pretty much doomed from the from the get-go. Right. You had, it was not it was so was much made. a lightning bolt, but rather an entire storm. The future of Colossal Kaiju Combat was unclear, so Simon hosted a town meeting in the form of a live stream with the intent of clearing up misconceptions about the project and answering questions. So initially we had about uh, seven to 8,000 people on the mailing list. And, you know, I was sending updates every two weeks. Uh, there were sometimes you know, a month in a row where I would send out a lot of updates about the card because there was a new card game coming out. And I think people would, would get upset. Um, a lot of people unsubscribed from the mailing list. And in fact, a whole lot of people unsubscribed and later complained that they didn't know what was going on. During this live stream, Simon suggested rebranding the forums with a focus on community, separate from the Kaiju Combat games. I'd like it and the game to both coexist, and I'd like there to be a connection between them, but I don't like this idea that the community exists to support the game. First of all, that's not true, because the game doesn't need the community to finish development, I just need the developers to finish development. Um, but also because if it only exists to support the game and something happens to the game, that reflects poorly on the community, and I feel like there's a lot of merit in the community on its own. I think it has its own merits. On January 1st, 2017, 
the fall of Nemesis Clash of the Kaijujin was officially cancelled. Although this didn't necessarily mean that the whole project was dead, most of the game's followers viewed it as the final nail in the kaiju combat coffin. Active forum users slowly dwindled, and by late 2018, the community forums were taken down seemingly for good. A few of the old users migrated over to a kaiju combat discord server, but it doesn't appear to be very active. Today, colossal kaiju combat is mostly forgotten, and I think that's a real shame. There were some legitimately creative creative and talented people to be found on the forum, and I personally enjoyed the short period of time I spent following the project. But in the end, what's done is done, and it's very unlikely that this series will ever see another entry.